What's up guys, it's Johnny here from Retroplay Games, and today we have much anticipated set 2 from Grand Archive. We're going to be cracking open an entire case of the new Fractured Crown. Let's do it. guys here we go so set two of grand archive this is the fractured crown set so some big changes have been implemented here between dawn of ashes and the new set uh, essentially we're dealing with 18 boxes per case now so this entire case is 18 boxes comes out to 360 packs um, some of the major major changes affecting this are that there is guaranteed to be one collector super rare per case at least one so we may see more than one in this case sadly with dawn of ashes i opened up an entire case on the last video uh plus i i think um, another couple of boxes in the, the very first video at launch didn't see any collector super rares um i'm happy to see that some players at the store did actually end up getting those though which is awesome so congratulations to those guys hopefully we're going to get the same luck at the store with um fractured crown here uh, so they've also introduced some armament cards uh, special cards every three boxes we should be able to see and then oh it says uh, collector super is here actually every 15 boxes so yeah at least one per case um, we may see more than one which i'm hoping is going to be the case here we've been getting really lucky on the channel with the box breaks that we've been doing recently i apologize that the content has been a little bit sparse so i've had an incredibly busy summer uh, some family stuff has been going on and I just haven't had the time to um, put out the YouTube videos. I'm in my makeshift studio once again here so um, shortly that stuff is going to be concluded. I'm going to be back in the regular studio. I'm going to be pushing out content uh, a lot more frequently and getting the channel back up and running again. So without further ado, I'm not going to talk too much. Like I said, guys, it's just an absolutely insane amount of product that we're going to be opening today. I think this is probably, I don't know, I think I've ever opened 18 boxes of anything in my life. The last one I think I did was the case of the first Grand Archive set, I think, was the largest product opening we've ever done on the channel. So this is vastly surpassing that. There's only 90 cards in the set, so we have a pretty good, I'd say, almost 100% guaranteed chance of getting every single card in the set plus duplicates we do have grand archive available um, on the website now in inventory so that stuff is going to be starting to hit as well uh, i picked up a couple of collections since the last time i i filmed on here so be anticipating all that stuff hitting the store shortly as well as any really cool uh, collector super stuff i'm hoping we get the dragon one that would be awesome as uh, you know a tamer player at heart rip sylvie she's getting some support in this one so here's hoping it's good it looks like merlin is really driving the story in this set though so i'm just gonna set these up behind me here like i said we've got 18 boxes of cards to open here guys we've got our lovely uh playmat here grand archive branded playmat this art was done by han chu and i think i mentioned that in one of the previous videos that went up to anime north Got to meet the creators of Grand Archive, which was awesome. And Han Chu, one of the artists, was there as well. Super awesome to meet her. Han, if you see this, thanks again for um, signing my Ghost of Pendragon for me. And thanks for producing some amazing art for this amazing game. And then I did uh, have Siladar, as you guys would know from the Discord server. Um, the Grandmaster himself signed my Grand Crusader's ring. So that was super awesome. And once again, thanks to the entire Grand Archive team, everybody that was there at Anime North. It was awesome to meet you, and I'm so happy that this game is doing well. I'm so excited about it. We had the store championship uh, just take place at Retroplay Games. We were one of, I think, only five stores in Canada that had it. So it was an honor to host that. It's an honor to be driving the success of this game, you know, from a grassroots standpoint. And if anybody is seeing this and hasn't checked it out yet, please, please do so. Uh, tabletop simulator you can play um, with people all over the world on the grand archive discord 
And then of course we are running Grand Archive weeklies at the shop Tuesday nights. We've got some starter product in, we've got tons of singles. I've got all the decks um, that were released as uh, starter packages. So if you want to come check it out, stop by Retro Play Games, hook you up. That's enough blabbering on. Let's get to the main event here. So we are opening 18 boxes of Grand Archive. Let's see those collector super rares come through. Like I said, we didn't get any with Dawn of Ashes. And that is a big reason why uh, Weaves of the Shore decided to change the distribution of packs and change the distribution of collector super rares um, to give everybody more of a chance at getting their hands on some of those beautiful, beautiful cards. So here we go. Frankly, I am going to open the packs and then put the cards back in the box and set the box aside. I apologize for my shadow getting in the way here. Like I said, this isn't the normal studio filming location, so it's not ideal, but it's going to do the trick. So without further ado, as I think I've said before, let's get into this. So they have preserved that little um, perforation on the pack there. That helps to make it super easy to open, which I love. Innovative. Gotta love innovative games. Can't wait to see what kind of foils we get out of this. Whoops. Here we go. Thieving Cut, Stalwart Shieldmate, Protective Fractal, Seeking Shot. And the card the cardstock quality is just as good as it was in Dawn of Ashes. Anthem of Vitality, very nice and thick. They feel like they're really um, you know high quality cards. And once again, for anybody that's checking out Grand Archive for the first time, if you haven't seen it before, I'll try to get out of the way here so you can see the backs of the cards are embossed. Like every step of the way from the very first launch on Kickstarter to the devs interaction with the community, the website, every little tiny bit of this game just exudes quality. So, you know, you're really, um... oh, and there was a super rare there, Ryan Morgan. Uh, you're really getting getting some quality uh, for your money when you're buying into Grand Archive. The gameplay is amazing. It's a very unique game. And I, some of the, the feedback that I got, like we have a lot of uh, TCG players at the store, people that play different games, and some of the feedback that we got, you know, when every new game comes out, people are hesitant about it. Like, oh, I'm not 100% sure on this. I would just say look to Flesh and Blood to see, you know, what kind of... Um, reception it first had when it came out and understand that Grand Archive is up there with the heavy hitters so you know I was like when I first heard about Flesh and Blood I was like oh I don't know and a rare Innervate Fury there oh I don't know you know it's a new thing and I'm not 100% sure about it and the game mechanics are unfamiliar I'm just not sure that that's something that I want to get in on and then I tried it and loved it and the same thing I fell in love with Grand Archive right away too so if you're on the fence about it guys just give it a try the starter decks are dirt cheap like I said we've got tons of singles on hand at the store so if you are local come on out or jump on the discord somebody is willing to give this game a try with you and I guarantee you are going to like it very unique gameplay mechanics it's got the beautiful anime artwork for all the weebs out there this place Cat's trying to get in on the uh, box opening. I don't know if he, he's getting picked up in the microphone or not. Another recent development that I haven't talked about. We've got some cats now. Scavenging Raccoon. Guardians of the Galaxy throwback right there. Song of Frost. Intrepid Spearman. Blazing Bowman. Capricious Lynx. Green Slime. Karhazi Trapper. And a Wand of Frost. So like I said, Tamer. My personal favorite class, getting some support in this set. Got to remember to set all that stuff aside so we can tally up all the pulls. See how we did. I bought uh, a big, big, big lot of um, first edition Dawn of Ashes stuff. Nothing insane, but enough for me to have essentially a play set of every single card in the game, which is awesome. Oh, we got our first foil here, Intrepid Spearman, Ordinary Bear, and then a Seeking Shot for our first foil. And that's another thing too, if you guys haven't seen my other Grand Archive video, the foils are actually something special. So it's not like everything is just, you know, a foil shoved into the pack and everything is foil and nothing is special. It's one in every couple of packs that you see a foil here. So 
you really do have to, or you really do appreciate them more as you go through and open them up. They're beautiful. Like I said, the quality of the cardstock is amazing. The print quality is really amazing. They've uh, worked with a printer in Taiwan to produce a next generation, very, very nice product here. So. Best way to get foils for those of you that want to blink. Ooh, nice, Uther, illustrious king. Another super rare there. The best way to get your hands on foils, guys, is going to be organized play. So we get, uh, we as retailers get organized play kits. I don't have the fractured crown ones in hand. They haven't arrived at distribution yet. Uh, so the packages came in today. Release is tomorrow. Of course, I'm not going to have this put up until midnight, so I'm not breaking any rules or anything. Um, I don't want to get in trouble with weebs or get in trouble with distribution. Uh, but the organized play kits for Fractured Crown have not arrived yet. We do still have uh, a bunch of the Dawn of Ashes stuff on hand. Um, so that's going to be the, the chief way that you're going to get foils in this. Opening boxes to try to foil out your stuff is not the way to go. The secondary market is also an option. Like I said, people are very active on the Discord. Stores myself pick this up are selling singles. Um, but the foils, they're, you know, they're not like inexpensive to pick up because they are harder to get. So keep that in mind as you're going through. You want to hold on to those foils. Precious Lynx, Green Slime, Corhazi Trapper, Wild Heart, Liar. Uh, and then for anybody that is going to Ascent, so Weebs of the Shore, the, you know, the game has been such a great success that they've been able to expand where they're going to be offering the Ascent events. So originally there was going to be one, it was offered down in Houston. Um, the game has been so successful that they are now looking to bring Ascent, which is essentially the, the World Championship, uh, to different locations as well, which is awesome to see. I'm happy again to see that the game has been doing so well and is so successful. So for those of you that aren't able to make it to Houston or you're in other parts of the world, Fear not, Weaves of the Shore has you covered. I think Auckland was the one that was uh, most recently announced. Ooh, Rally the Peasants. There we go, our second foil there. Farhazi Arsonist, Green Slime, and we got Innervate Agility for the rare. So we're, you know, definitely halfway through the box and we pulled two foils so you guys can see, you know, they are really something special. Lucky to get my hands on some really cool ultra super rare foils from uh, Dawn of Ashes that I'm, I'm not going to sell it. I'm just going to hang on to them. Ooh, Dawn of Ashes. Look at that. Beautiful full art treatment on that card. That is a uh, super rare from this box. Dawn of Ashes. Just like the first set. There is a fractured crown in this set. Think of that Family Guy joke. Oh, he said it. That's really cool artwork. I'd like to see that in a foil. And you know, hopefully we have a good chance at getting some of those really cool cards in foil because of the huge volume of product that we're opening. Fear not, this is not all of the allocation, guys. I did get quite a bit of this stuff. So for anybody that's interested in picking this up, if you haven't been able to find some locally, have no fear, just revealed the card in the back of the pack there. Unfortunately, Retroplay Games has you covered, so I do have boxes of this available. Uh, they're up for pre-order right now. I'm going to be cutting that. Blanche Sheltering Saint for the super rare there. Uh, I am going to be cutting that off this evening because, again, launch is tomorrow. So if you haven't picked these up, obviously by the time this video comes out at midnight, it's going to be too late for pre-ordering. Um, some of the boxes have already pre-sold. It seems like stores are selling out of this pretty quick. Distribution sold out of this pretty quick. Big thanks to my guy at Distribution. I don't know if you're seeing my channel or not, but thank you so much for helping me to get uh, what I need for Grand Archive to help satisfy the community. Ocean's Blessing, Red Slime, Displace for our rare there. Maybe we should keep the super rares separate. I haven't been separating them into their different components of rare, ultra rare, super rare. We haven't seen an ultra rare yet, so there we go. There's our super rare pile. These are rares. Foils. Love the feel of the cards. 
Love the way the game plays. I'm very excited to get Fractured Crown uh, build up with it and see what we can do with our girl Merlin taking over Lorraine. Big shout out to Fire Lorraine for winning the store championship. As if anybody saw that coming. Flame Break Chorus, Lurking Assailant. I haven't played Assassin. I've seen some people are having success with Xander, the Assassin class. I haven't given it a try yet, so maybe I'll have to do that as well. Opening these packs, really reinvigorating my desire to try new things in the game. You know, it's easy to get comfortable with one hero, but the way that the game plays, like having the um, all the different elements available to build decks in different ways really shakes up the flavor. Avatar of Gaia, nice. Another one for the tamer pile there. Go Sylvie. Still like to get my hands on a serialized C-U-R Sylvie. If anybody out there has one, please hit me up. We can work out a trade or work something out. I would really like to have one of those. Sylvie is my jam. I always played a hunter in World of Warcraft. So it really called to me as a class. For sure, resolute stand and a shock therapy for me there. Getting down to the end of box one. This is going to be a really long video. <laughs> yeah, just approaching the end of the first box. Cinderary Fractal, Lurking Assailant, Dematerialized, Fast Cure, Crimson Protective Trinket, Guarded Dissipation, and a Gentle Respite. Try not to rest my elbow on the table because it shakes the camera. So I gotta feel like I gotta hold my arm up the whole time to avoid disturbing the quality of the video. And sadly, my arm gets real tired. So maybe I'll have to take a little bit of a break in between boxes to rest the old pack opening arm. We gotta be on top of our game here because pulling these collector super rares. Hey, there we go. Uther, illustrious king. So that's a double of that super rare. I wonder how long it's going to take until we complete the set. It's not going to be a super huge number of boxes, which is good. Uh, that was one of the issues that Dawn of Ashes had was that there wasn't, like, the game was so hyped. People went absolutely bonkers for it. I sold out a product immediately. I barely got to open any for myself. Um, so people were having a hard time completing their sets of cards. And Ooh, Prismatic Sanctuary. Look at that again. Beautiful full art treatment there. Just a beautiful card. I thought there was one ultra rare per box. So rarity distribution. There are seven ultra rares total in the set and we haven't seen one from the box yet. So I don't know if they were guaranteed. We got two packs left. I don't know if we're guaranteed to get an ultra rare in every box or not. But once again, you know, there's some value in opening packs because the cards that you get that you're not using are likely going to be of value to somebody else. So you're going to be able to trade or sell to complete your um, play sets, complete your decks, whatever you need there. Hazy Trapper, and there we go, Spirit of Serene Wind. We got our first Ultra Rare. So new spirits available in the Fractured Crown set here. So the original uh, on enter draw seven cards. Uh, on this one, you glimpse six and then draw six cards. Lineage release, recover six. So you can banish this card from your champion's inner lineage. And then that's going to recover you um, six damage. So a new kind of strategy uh, in terms of how to play the game. Introducing these new Serene. Uh, I think it's Serene Wind. I'm not sure. We'll have to see when we get through. It's, uh, it's been a little bit since we've looked at the spoilers. Like, I can't say that I haven't done this and I'm going in completely blind. But I kind of avoided it uh, leading up to release just because I didn't want to... I wanted to kind of go in a little bit fresh and be surprised. Especially when it comes to some of the cooler, shinier cards. Prazi Arsonist, Covenant of Thorns for the last rare in the box. So here's our pile of rares, here's our super rares, and one ultra rare for the box. That completes the first box of Grand Archive Fractured Crown, ladies and gentlemen. 
let's move on to box number two. Oh, that's a lot of packs. We'll try to speed through this a little bit faster, I think, because you guys are probably going to use that scrub button on YouTube to skip ahead and see what the fancy pull cards are anyway. Hopefully you'll stick around. I really do want to grow the channel, so if you know anybody, like we cover all kinds of stuff on here. So miniature gaming, TCGs, video games, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Grand Archive, Flesh and Blood. We do a little bit of all of that stuff. So if you guys have friends you know, out there, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to share the channel out. I do want to hit 100 subs as fast as possible uh, because I have some special stuff planned uh, for later on this year and 100 subs is going to allow me to use the live stream feature which I think you guys are really going to be interested in based on what I'm doing. I'm not going to spoil that yet. I'm going to make a video about it as the time comes closer for that to happen but just be aware I've got some cool things cooking up so like, subscribe, share guys. Help me get to 100 subs so we can start live streaming on YouTube directly. Help me grow the channel so I can work less and do more YouTube and not suffer for it. Illuminate Secrets. Look at that. I know uh, a few other people, my buddy Billy with Sunday Slot Cars, he's doing, you know, getting some revenue off of YouTube and I'd like to start getting to that point as well. So again, I can work less hard and do more of this kind of cool stuff with you guys and engaging with the community. Spend more time playing games and less time having to sell games to pay the bills. So find once you turn this into a business, you don't really have time to... Ooh, Blanche Sheltering Saint there. Another one. So that's a double of that super rare. Uh, you don't have as much time to, you know, play the games and enjoy the hobbies you love. I do get to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I do play Flesh and Blood here and there with the guys, which is nice. I haven't played a game of Warhammer in months because it's so time-consuming. I was in an Age of Sigmar League with my Sylvaneth. We were having a great time. And then, like I said, I had some family stuff uh, that we had going on this summer, which is, you know, family's the most important thing. So I put everything to the side for that. And I had to drop out of the Warhammer League and haven't really had a chance to pick it back up. But I've got so much of that kind of stuff sitting around. I've got a whole new Age of Sigmar army, the Seraphon, that I'm dying to play. Dinosaurs riding dinosaurs, guys, right? Like, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, it, uh, it, Horse Heresy, I've got my Imperial Fists that are sitting and waiting. I built my way through most of that stuff. Brand new Tyranids came out with the Leviathan box. we got new games coming out. Super Mario RPG is getting re-released on the Switch with a remaster. Like, <laughs> that is one of my all-time favorite games from the Super Nintendo era. 90s guy here. Feel free to leave a comment below with your favorite video game. What other stuff do you play? Do you play Warhammer? If so, what faction? Let's get some comments, some discussion going in the comments, guys. What is your favorite champion from Grand Archive? Whoops, giving away a foil there. And we got a Blazing Bowman for the foil. That is really, really nice. Azure Protective Trinket, Ocean's Blessing, Innervate Agility. There we go. Love these foils. So again, we're you know one box and some change in. We've got three foils so far. We do have a good collection of foils that I've built up. Oh, and I think I was gonna segue back into the ascent events and then I got sidetracked. Oh, okay, we got another foil there. That's crazy. Pack after pack, we got another foil. Look at that. Maybe two per box. Maybe we're gonna get lucky and get three plus for this box. Uh, but so there's two ways that you can compete in the um, Ascent events. So they have the Path of Steel and the Path of Silver. Path of Steel is the traditional show up with your constructed deck or whatever the format is. Uh, presumably it's going to be constructed. I don't know if they're going to be doing any sealed formats uh, for any of these, but I haven't looked too, too far into it. I'm sure that's going to be on the docket and there'll be side events and stuff. Uh, Path of Steel, show up, compete. Beat the other person to death with your hero or your champion, and then you win. Uh, and then there's the Path of Silver, where, ooh, Incarnate Majesty. There we go. That's a really nice artwork. I'd love to see some of those in foil. I'm really hoping we get some of the cool super and potentially the ultra rares. Like these domains, guys. Where are those? The Prismatic Sanctuary in foil? Can you, look, look at, you can just imagine how amazing that would be. A lot of the first edition foils, like Arima, Gaia's Wings. Ugh, the artwork on that card is so beautiful. I tried to track one down, a first edition uh, foil of that. And the price was just 
phenomenally high. So I was like, all right, I'm going to sit and wait. Maybe it'll go down in value. Probably not. But I do want to get my hands on that. Uh, again, in the path of silver. So you can compete uh, with your collection. So the person that has the best collection at these events in the path of silver. So you have to have the, you know, get the foils, get all the collector ultra rares, get the collector super rares. It's quite a, a, a big deal uh, investment wise. You're either going to be opening a ton of product or you're going to be spending a ton of money on the secondary market. And the person with the coolest collection, with the most shiny stuff, the most blinged out collection is going to win. Ooh, ornamental. Great. So, oh, okay, guys. So this is one of those uh, armaments here. So I want to try to capture this for you. You can see it's embossed. Like, look at that. This is absolutely sick. These armament weapons, oh man, ornamental greatsword. So that is definitely going to be something that I'm going to be playing in my Lorraine deck 100%. I just got to touch. Oh, yeah. Okay. It, the, the whole thing is fully textured. It reminds me of like a secret rare Pokemon card where it has the texturing on it. Guys, this is just beautiful. Oh, man. I really hope we get some of the other higher end weapons for that. That is a phenomenal pull. I love these. Weaves of the Shore knocked it out of the park with these armaments, guys. That is just so sick. So what are the options for that set? It's a subset of popular staple regalia from Dawn of Ashes and a new rarity and unique foil treatment. So there's one of these every three boxes. So that's cool. We got one on our second box. It doesn't specify what all is going to be available in armament. It's probably, so let's see. Anything? So a new rarity and unique foil treatment. Oh man, imagine a Grand Crusader's ring in that new armament rarity. Oof, that would just be so cool. Ooh, Kral, Stone Scale Tyrant. There's the dragon. So we want to see the collector's super rare of this guy. Like, <laughs> I can't tell you how bad I want to get my hands on that. But there we go. We managed to get our Stone Scale Tyrant. I really, really want to do some brewing with Sylvie or um, Alan, Beast Beckoner, anything to, to get the Tamer class working. Like, the idea of just slapping down dragons and phoenixes and other creatures on the field is just... Love it. Coming from my magic roots. That's what I want to do in this game. And I really do like the idea of having, um, you know, the other allies and stuff. So you don't have to be playing the Tamer deck. Like with Flesh and Blood, you have to play the Illusionist uh, Dromai. If you want to summon out those cool dragons, it's just the one, the one archetype that can do that. Or that specializes in doing that. And then I think with Prism, you get... Some of the, I'm not super familiar with Prism, even though I've had my ass kicked by her several times. Uh, she can put the uh, Phantasms out. But this game encourages you to have allies fighting by your side, which is awesome. So it's either dragons or soldiers or assassins or whatever, depending on the class that you're playing. You get those allies out on the field. And I like, you know, building up a board and having that back and forth of trading pieces. Feels more like chess instead of just beating my opponent with weapons or you know shooting magic at them which that's fun don't get me wrong it's a viable play style and i see the appeal and i do like to engage in that kind of raucous behavior once in a while as well uh, but certainly i enjoy the uh, you know building up the board state so there we go lurking assailant we've got another foil so really hitting it with the foils this four foils from this box guys including the uh ornamental greatsword armament that we got there really really happy with this box 100 percent there is a still a whole other sealed case available uh, and then we've got a couple of loose boxes as well that are going uh, that have been pre-sold already that are going out tomorrow so you can have a chance to get your hands on some of this kind of cool stuff here at retro play games shop.retroplaygames.com i've always got the link in the bottom right hand corner Ooh, bit of air woodland overseer tamer animal human just taunt as long as you control another animal or beast ally and then on death put a buff counter on each animal or beast ally you control that is a 100 percent a must-have class bonus level three plus though and that's kind of what the problem is with sylvie is that she just tends to die before she gets to level three so jazzed about that ornamental great sword so jazzed Shield mate, there we go. Fast cure, develop mana, intrepid spearman, 
Invoker, Frostbind Apostle, and Explosive Rune for the rare for this one. We're kind of getting down, so we got, what, five packs left in the box, guys. Completing box two of 18. I really can't wait to see what more enemies we get here. Hey, Stalwart Shield Mate, Riptide Slash. Hopefully the artwork is visible enough for you. I'm trying to kind of stay out of the way here as I'm opening these and a gentle respite again. Just look at the artwork. That in foil would also be awesome. Not everybody's a weeb. I'm a huge weeb. But you have to appreciate the quality of the artwork regardless of whether or not you're into anime. It's very unique. And the artists that are producing this are quite talented. And great people too. Once again, meeting Han Chu was awesome. She is really, really cool. I'm happy to have had her sign my Ghost of Pendragon. Absolute stand Green Slam invent a staff of Zephyrs for the super rare there. It feels like we're getting a decent decent haul on super rares. Did I put okay? Just to make sure I don't mix up all my cards here. So curious what the ultra rare in this box is going to be. So there's seven ultra rares and we got 18. Here's hoping we don't get a ton of doubles. I would like to just complete a set of this. And the great thing is that the ultra rares uh, tend to be the regalia items, which you only need one of. So it doesn't... Ooh, okay, right of realm. There we go. You activate a domain. You may sacrifice right of realm if you do the domain to the battlefield without any of its upkeep abilities. Super cool. Two packs left in this box, guys. Let's see if we can hit another armor. So you know what? Let's get that collected super rare. Although I don't want to open that, so because then it's like, oh, okay, stream over. Nobody needs to watch anymore because we're probably going to get one per case. <laughs> Ordinary bear, but we could get two. So I guess that could, that's going to keep people hooked, keep people watching. Fractal of Intrusions. Fractals are one of the new things in this set. It's cool to see. Song of Frost, Tariff Ring, Deep Sea Fractal, Fractal of Insight, Horn by Fire, Detective Trinket, Refracting Missile, and a Wild Heart Liar. For the last of box two, guys, moving on to box three. Let's grab from the middle. Let's do the middle. Handy dandy box opener. Ready, set, go. Cut it open. Get into it. Not sure how far we into far we are into recording this video. But like I said, it's going to be a long one. We got a long case to open here. Okay, here we go. Making an absolute mess. The pack wrappers on the floor. Whatever. Okay. Mark of Fervor. Terraframe. Seeking Shot, Anthem of Vitality, Peaceful Reunion, Frostbinder Apostle, Scatter Essence, and Slay the King. Crux. Love the look of those Crux cards. Even Cut, Riptide Slash, Intrepid Spearman, Peaceful Reunion. Sorry, I need to hold these up higher so you guys can appreciate the art. Posse Arsonist, and we got the Windwalker Boots as our rare for the pack. We're gonna have to start stacking up some more of these, uh, put another one of these boxes up and just throwing the uncommons and commons into the, bo the empty boxes and we'll get the full here. Tight Slash, Flame Break Chorus, Lurking Assailant, Deep Sea Fractal. Ooh, there we go. Peaceful Reunion. That's a really cool foil. I like the artwork on that one too. Peaceful Reunion for our foil. Rally the Peasants, Protective Trinket, and another Avatar of Gaia for the rare. Getting that tamer stuff. No variation on the pack art though. That's one thing I would say is uh, kind of a bummer. But I mean, dude, that's probably the most minor complaint a person could lodge. Given all of the positives that Grand Archive has going for it. Oh, there's no variation in the pack art. 
Terrible. We'll take Sphere. Super rare. I'm gonna have a heck of a time getting these on the site. I bought it's what was it like a 5,000 count box, I think, with all the first edition stuff there. So I want to start getting that put up and start moving some of these singles on the website as well. Just like I said, haven't had the time for a whole lot other than family time this summer, which frankly has been refreshing. I find that I am somewhat of a workaholic and have a hard time saying no to taking on new things. So this has been a bit of a refreshing change for me to kind of relax and enjoy the fruits of the, you know, my hard work over the last basically eight years. And a big thanks to you guys for making it happen, supporting Retroplay Games, supporting the channel, supporting the store. Would not be where I am without you. So know that you are appreciated. And I'm looking forward to getting some more subscribers. So anybody in the future as well that subscribes and come back and see this video, thank you so much. Illuminate Secrets for the rare. Get a big old pile of rares there. Yep, we're going to have to retire this box. Uh, oh, oh, it's on the floor. Box number two. Singles. It's going to be a mountain of pack garbage. I think I posted that. <laughs> that was the thumbnail for the Dawn of Ashes case opening that I did. It was all the pack garbage. Maybe I'll do that for this one instead. That's the one that I took at the store. Bedivere, Woodland Overseer. We're going to need those for our Tamer deck. I'm happy to see doubles of that. That's a super rare. I don't know if they upshifted the rarity of that ornamental great sword. I don't think that was a super rare to begin with. They've probably upshifted the specific. Um, oops. Oh no! Throwing cards all over the place. We probably upshifted that specific printing of it in a different rarity to make sure that it's distributed properly amongst all the boxes. I think that was a common in the first set. I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember. Okay. Steady Verse, Incendiary Fractal, Cunning Broker, Insight, Anthem of Vitality, Frostbind. Crimson Protection Trinket and Fracture Eyes for the rare. Excited to see what set 3 is going to be. There hasn't been any announcement of that. I do follow the Grand Archive Discord uh, and keep an eye on the Weaves the Shore website pretty closely. So it would be cool to see where we end up going with that. Uh, and I'm definitely going to continue to be ripping cases. I think it's going to be another core set, so there'll be core supplemental, core supplemental. Uh, they're going to introduce some new, uh, new champions, new classes. Really shake up the game. Ooh, deep sea fractal. Well, they're perfect. Look at that. There's loot stand, and we got this place rare. So we should end up with six of those armaments. Yeah, this would be really cool to pull a Grand Crusader's ring. That's like, ooh, ultra rare Spirit of Serene Fire. There we go. We have not pulled any ultra rare doubles as of this time. We're just hoping that trend keeps up when we get a full set of seven. So we need five more unique ultra rares. Peaceful Reunion, Reflecting Missile, ooh, another Dawn of Ashes. That is just beautiful artwork. I would love to see that in foil. Any of the domains in foil, especially those first edition ones from Dawn of Ashes, man. The, the full art treatment those things got was just phenomenal. Definitely pick that stuff up if you can find it. But there was very limited first edition product printed, so again, some of those things are Pretty expensive. Even the dungeon guide, the promos. Oh, I remember looking at those, you know, around the time that the game was starting to pick up some traction and people were selling some of the promotional stuff that they had gotten 
on the Discord and was like, wow, Dungeon God, you know, the price of that just seems like it's a little bit crazy. And then the game actually released. And of course, Dungeon Guide is just an insanely good stable that you need to have three of at this point. I think there's going to be some changes, potentially shaking up the meta um, in terms of, you know, limiting and... The, oh, okay. I thought that was crimped. Oh, cool. I got an error pack there. Maybe we'll get something good in it. Uh, you may expect Dungeon Guide to change in the number that are allowed in the deck. I can't remember if that has been announced. There are just some cards that they're watching, I think, at this point in time. And a wild heart fire for the rare. Um, but it's the, the uh, special promo version of Dungeon Guide. Just the artwork is gorgeous. Full art, foil treatment. And we're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars for that card. Really, really regret not getting my hands on one when I had a chance. Say. Effigy of Gaia. You gotta put together a binder too. I'm gonna have to make sure to. Because um, I have a card vault that I've been storing all my stuff in. Just because I'm too lazy to sleeve everything up and put it in binders. And then I come, you know, bring binders back and forth from the shop all the time too. Whoops. And a seeking shot there. Resolute stand. And it just gets to be too much having so many different binders that I gotta carry on with me all the time. Oops. I don't want that. I want these in the bin there. I'm running out of room here. So I think this has been kind of on display long enough. We're going to roll these ones up. Put those over here. And we'll start a new pile of our super rares. Ultra rares, I don't think we're going to have to worry about it. Well, we're going to get 18 of them. So how far across the map is that going to go? And our two collector super rares that I know we're going to be pulling out of this box. This place, a rare foil there. Love to see those foils. Did really good on foils in the last box. So I think with uh, that's a, a bit of an above average pull rate for foils. Last pack magic, guys. Let's see one of those armaments. Let's see one of two collector super rares from this box. You gotta be optimistic. You gotta get lucky on the channel. Home by fire, ordinary bear. Seeking shot, refracting missile, azure protective trinket, and slay the king. Pulled a rare out of the last pack of the box. Off to the bin with these, and then next box. Here we go. We'll, let's grab one from this side. Here we go. Ready, set, go. Don't cut your fingers. Oh. And there we go. Paper cut. <laughs> Thankfully not. I'm doing enough of my cutting and super gluing my fingers with Warhammer. I don't need to be doing that in the TCGs which are a refreshing break from miniatures because that's that's the key thing about trading card games you crack them open they're ready to play with you don't have to build and glue and cut and paint and do all that stuff so they are a bit of a refreshing change of pace but the depth of miniature games like you just can't beat that side plug all the games workshop stuff is 15 percent off msrp all the time at retro play games so if that ooh, there we go another dawn of ashes we are really really getting those dawn of ashes here uh if uh, miniature games are something that you're interested in trying out we have the starter sets we have a huge community of people that are looking to play games we always want to add more tons of tables tons of space tons of terrain and a great community of folks to play Warhammer with. So please stop out. That's Wednesday nights at RetroPlay Games. Yu-Gi-Oh! happening at OTS. Um, or Sorry, Yu-Gi-Oh! OTS happening on Tuesdays. If you are in the area, the Sarnia area, and you would like to come and check out some Yu-Gi-Oh! It's a great time to be getting back in. we got the 25th anniversary packs that have come out. So everybody's uh, getting the nostalgia. Christian from the group. Pulled the Blue Eyes White Dragon from one of the LOB boxes that we had selling packs out of it. Uh, Jinzo has come out of PSV. Like, just, you know, the cards that you collected and played when you were a child are what is hot and in print again in 2023. Here we go, 25 years later. So, don't sleep on the 25th anniversary stuff, guys. Now is your chance to get your hands on some of those old cards. And we have a big interest in the Edison, the old school Edison format. So if Retro Yu-Gi-Oh! is, uh, you know, your jam, 
Built format, Edison format, Time Wizard, those things are all uh, supported and sanctioned by Konami now. So let's get some of that going. Stop on out Tuesday nights for OTS. We've got the packs. We've pulled an insane amount of ultimate rares. My, my, myself personally, uh, two triple tactics thrust ultra rares and uh, a pearly ult, uh, ultimate rare. So the OTS packs are stacked at retro play games. And of course, like I said, getting back on the Grand Archive train, we do have the Dawn of Ashes uh, competitive packs. And then hopefully distribution is going to be sending out the Fractured Crown uh, organized play pack shortly and we're going to be able to get our hands on those so onward and upward with grand archive stalwart shield mate precious links i think we've probably completed i think we've got to have completed the set at this point probably not play sets of all of them uh, but we definitely have pulled i think all of the unique cards but i'm not keeping track frankly i don't have enough encyclopedic knowledge of the set to know if I pulled everything or not. So I'm really sad. I wanted to uh, get some footage of the uh, store championship. I've been uh, I've gotten some more equipment, so streaming and recording is going to be more of a regular thing for all of the events. Warhammer, I think, is going to probably be the trickiest, just because there's so much stuff happening on the table. Um, the technical limitations that we're facing with gear that is not cheap uh, is real with that so but definitely more trading card game stuff and I wanted to get a setup like I did with uh, flesh and blood but I was just so busy I didn't have the time to uh, to get a setup and record any of the gameplay unfortunately so look forward to that stuff coming soon there we go foil fractal of insight for Hazi outlook and explosive room for the rare Look forward to more gameplay, guys. Um, the video game stuff, I've got actually, uh, so my son is here from out of town. That's the family stuff that's been, uh, that's been going on here at home. Whoops, he's accidentally yanked my headphones right off, shook the whole table. Uh, so I've got him featured in one of the upcoming YouTube videos on the channel, as well as uh, my younger son is interested in doing some Let's Play style videos with uh, the video games that he is really into right now. So you guys can look forward to Retro Play Junior coming soon. If your kids like to watch Pokemon openings and see somebody that they can probably relate to a little bit more than the store owner, that's going to be for you. So keep an eye on that. Rondite Azure Blade. Ooh, okay, like that. Cool water regalia. We're going to be pushing Lorraine into water territory here. I think the um, the organized play packs allow for to do sealed play allow for multi uh, elemental here or, uh, deck builds, which is really cool. It's not something that's coming to constructed. I thought that would have been really sweet if they had done that. Effigy of Gaia, super rare there, uh, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. So it's just for the sealed, uh, sealed deck stuff only. But you know, like I said, with the way they've done the elements on these, um, there really are some cool opportunities for unique design space uh, and room to grow the game in different directions with what they've done with it so far. So. I'm really excited to see what continues in the future. Really excited about this set in particular. Again, I want I'm underdogging. I want Sylvie to be good. So here's hoping that she has a bit more of a fighting chance. They did give her some buff cards uh, with the release of Unlimited Dawn of Ashes, or Alter Edition rather, I should say. First edition had some cards that were not, uh, or had, there was cards that weren't present in the first edition that got released. So. She did get a little bit of a buff in that regard, but again, the Tamer class is just too slow to keep up with Lorraine and Rye uh, and Xander. She dies before she gets to level 3, and that's really where you want to be at so that you can take advantage of some of those cool uh, ally beast cards. Which, you know, you don't, oh, okay, you don't have to play competitively. Um, Sylvie, ooh, okay. Wayne, Chivalrous Thief. Look at that foil, guys. That's beautiful. We got the cool symbols in there. 
got a Triscuit foil uh, from Dawn of Ashes that we ended up getting pulled at the store. That is awesome. Double super rare pull. Love to see those foils. I can't remember what I was saying before we got that sick pull. Oh yeah, the Tamer class. Yeah, it just it can't keep up. So I mean you don't have to play competitive. Of course, if you're going to your locals or you're going to any of the higher level tournaments like the store championship, Covenant of Thorns, I think that's a big pile of rares there. Um you're gonna be up against ooh, okay. Some of these packs are really folded in there. Um, you're gonna be up against a lot of those high, more highly competitive decks, and it's frankly insane what some of them are capable of doing but in a casual environment just playing with your friends or even the, the starter pickup starter deck pickup games more than oh okay quick silver grail for the ultra rare there so we are at four unique ultra rares so far three more to go to complete our set and then the rest are going to be available for you guys to buy at shop.retroplaygames.com don't miss the link in the bottom right hand corner of the video there guys and once again this is a long one so don't forget to like subscribe and share the channel help me grow it let's get to 100 subscribers so i can do cool live streaming stuff and really take things to the next level here okay prismatic sanctuary for the secret or super rare there secret rare what is this Yu-Gi-Oh? speaking of which i'm pretty jacked for um a rarity collection for you, Gil, coming, I believe, November 20-something. Uh, there's going to be some really cool reprints in that. 25th anniversary quarter century secret rares, guys. Don't sleep on those because they're not going to be available forever. That is a this year thing only. And then we have, um, what is it, the Prismatic Secret Rare. There's, there's a couple of different printing technologies that Konami is bringing to Yu-Gi-Oh! in November that uh, used to be OCG exclusive. So they were only available in Japan or in overseas, rather, in the uh, OCG. We're going to be getting some of that stuff with the Rarity Collection, guys. I'm looking super forward to opening a case of that with you. On the channel as well there's going to be some beautiful reprints some much needed reprints of stuff for sure okay box five math is hard second booster box full of singles is almost full there There we go. Okay. Tithe Proclamation, Mark of Fervor, Deep Sea Fractal, Cunning Broker, Anthem of Vitality, Red Slime, Karhazi Outlook, and Uther Illustrious King. Super rare. Can we keep up? Wait, so we're five boxes in, so the next couple of boxes here are going to have another one of those cool um, armament cards in them. So let's hope for a Grand Crusader's Ring. I think that would probably go for a pretty penny on the open market there. This place. And that's the name of the game with uh, some of this stuff. That's why I decided to open another whole case again. Again, I didn't get a chance to get some of those collector super rares. And when you hit those cards, don't hold on to them. I'm not going to hold on to them anymore. I'm going to put those up on the open market for you guys to get your hands on. And that's going to help me continue to fund my gameplay experience. No Lorcana, no Disney Lorcana. I haven't um, gone down that rabbit hole, frankly. I think I have too many games on the go as it is and it's tough to keep up with them you know getting the releases in the shop as well as actually keeping up with all of the stuff so i think that uh disney is going to print the ever living crap out of it too and it's going to be a race to the bottom on singles values stuff is really good right now prismatic sanctuary man we're getting the entire print run of those
but I think Disney Larkana is going to get quite a bit of reprints. So let's see what ends up happening. Peace Reunion, Detective Trinket, Zephyr's Edge. Commons and uncommons. 360 packs times. How many cards per pack? Eight. <laughs> I'm gonna need another 2,000 count box. How's my collection, guys? Oop! Resolute stand for the foil there. Foils just have a really cool, like, sheen slippery feel to them too they feel really good in your hand cards in general feel really good in the hand with that embossed backing and the special texturing um, or that rather the thicker cardstock that they have so let me know what you think a lot of card games have come out obviously if you're watching this you got to be lancelot goliath of asa you got to be a fan of Grand Archive if you're watching this video, if you're going to slog it out with me for all 18 boxes of this. Um, you got to be, you know, a, a fan of Grand Archive. But a lot of good, a lot of stuff has come out. So Flesh and Blood, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon Magic, Disney Lorcana. Let me know what your favorite card game is and why down in the comments below. Let's get some action on the comments section, guys. Interact with me because it's weird. I'm just... I like to come back and see the comments on the videos and check the likes and stuff, but in the meantime, like, I'm essentially just sitting here talking to myself, so I feel like if I ask you guys to comment, I'm getting a little bit of interaction that's not just quite a one-sided affair. I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit. I don't want to be sitting here all night and just throwing the packs on the floor. Oops. Through it. Not a foil, just a common there. A peaceful reunion. Don't worry about it. There we go. And a rare shock therapy. And again, the cards are spilled. The faster I go, the something's got to give. There we go. This box is full. Let's put our stuff in here. Did it. Any empty booster boxes. Don't worry about that. Garbage man is going to have a field day with this stuff. Throw it all in the recycling. That's one thing I wish they had the paper packs. I do love that um, Flesh and Blood has done that. For Ruck and Soul Knife, so what does that do? Banish Steel, make cards from Graveyard, activate it from the material deck on kill. Return it to the material deck. Kind of cool. The sneaky Assassins. Precious Links, Ocean's Blessing with another foil there. Into the bin. On to the next pack. I really want to see another one of those armaments. I can't wait to find out what we get. So again, 18. We should end up with six of them. Fractal of intrusion. Ring for the first pack, the first card, there we go. Capricious Links. Stamped. Ooh, Fractured Crown. There we go. The namesake card of the set. Look at the artwork, guys. I'll try to get my shadow out of the way there. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. In lovely 60 frames per second. That is really cool to finally see that. And that's one, two, three, four, five. Unique Ultra Rares so far. We haven't doubled up. We need two more. I love that they're all the Regalia cards are the Ultra Rares, so we don't have to worry about having play sets of them because they are relatively difficult to get. So one Ultra Rare per box. Not like with Dawn of Ashes. The rarity distribution is different. Things are going to be a little harder to get their hands on. But again, you know, you got to have something to chase. There has to be some value in the box to get people opening it. Otherwise, everybody's just going to say, er, I'm going to buy singles on the secondary market. Nobody's going to open product. And then stuff is even worse in terms of expense because there's just no supply out there. So you got to have people like me doing these hunts, opening these packs, and getting these videos up for you guys. 
Parsonet Royal Maid Assassin. Six thirty-four p.m. here at the Retro Play Game Studio. Making pretty good time. We're almost a third of the way through the box. This next box is going to put us a third of the way through. We've done good so far. Really good haul of foils. Really good haul of those ultra rares. Want to see some foil ultra rares? I'm not going to lie, the fractured crown would be beautiful to have. Uh, foil Grand Crusaders ring would have been beautiful to pull too, but that went to Adam. But, you know, you can't win them all. The case that I sold to him, it was like, oh, I want to open it. He's like, oh, I'm going to buy it from you. So I was like, all right, man, I'll help you out. And <laughs> I should have opened it. <laughs> Could have had some really good cards in there. He got the Collector Super Rare and a Foil Grand Crusaders ring. He definitely came out ahead on that box. Ooh, there we go. Incendiary Fractal. It's a common foil, but it is a foil nonetheless. So we will take it. If it ends up being a good playable gonna have some value regardless of rarity but we did you know get a regular Grand Crusaders ring so I was able to get all the cards that I needed for the most part uh, for deck building so no worries Red Slime, Grand Discipline, Oi! another Kraus Stone Scale Tyrant a little bit of a chattering on top of that there and once again we are gonna have to squinch all these together and put them into the super rare pile as we approach the next box. We are just swimming in some quality cards here. All of our foils. Try not to mess these up too much so they stay visible. So that's the goodies right there. The foils are the hardest. Foils and ultra rares. And then those armaments. Man, I can't say enough good things about those. And there should be one in this box on average according to the rarity distribution chart on the website that I have open in front of me so that I know what I'm talking about and don't sound like a fool in this Grand Archive video. Nothing wrong with that, guys. Not everything's got to be off the cuff. we got beautiful Tokyo here in the background. Okay, let's get our armament and our collector super rare. Let's get three collector supers in this case. To say there could be more than one, it would be insane if we pulled the god case. Christian has insane pack luck, so I told him to choose which case I was going to open on the channel. So here's hoping he didn't let me down, bro. There better be some fire in this box. And so far, so good. We're doing really good with our ultra rare distribution. We only need two more of the unique ultra rares to complete our playset, which is great. Oh, man, Anthem of Vitality. How's the Arsonist? Ooh, and a Cloak of Stillwater. Getting a little faster getting through these. Here we go. Trying not to in the edges of those as I open them. But these packs are actually really smooth to open. I do wish they had the same kind of paper pack style that Legend Story Studios uses for Flesh and Blood. I'd like to see actually all the major card companies go to that style. First of all, they're insanely easy to open. Like, you don't struggle with them at all because they're not plastic. And also, they're not plastic. So they can go into the recycling bin instead of throwing into garbage. And they are biodegradable and can be recycled into other paper products. So a much more sustainable way to package trading cards, which everybody benefits from. Ooh, okay, Majestic Spirit. There's our Ultra Rare there. So that's six. We are looking to, uh, looking to get one more ultra rare. Regalia Ally. Intercept True Sight Figure. Champions of Spell Shroud. Another, oh man, it costs 12 to play. That's insane. Another Crux Element. Unit Control Take Damage. We're going to have that damage rounded up. So you are going to have to stack an absolute massive amount of memory to get that boy out on the field. But, oh, really, really great card. Insanely powerful. Hey, Blanche Sheltering Saint. There we go. One more ultra rare. And then we've completed our set and we're all good to go there. But again, I do want to see foil ultra rare. I want to see more of these armament cards. Frostbind and another Dawn of Ashes. Ah, he said it. It's the name of the game. Or the name of the 
What's that? It's like the Fractured Crown. Oh, actually, yeah, Dawn of Ashes is the first one. Fractured Crown. I didn't make the joke when I shut up. Too late to the punch. That's funny. Alright, are we gonna get, was it Merlin? Like I said, I think. So we want that Merlin. Collector Super. That's going to be probably the big money pull of the set. They are not serialized, so they are not commanding the same kind of money. Hopefully, like I said, if I can just put a dent in what it costs me to play this game by pulling some CSRs out of this case, I will be happy. If I don't get a single... Ooh, there we go! Sort of seeking for the armament. Look at that, guys. Like, look at the... Ugh! Beautiful embossed, like I can't, oh man, it just it reminds me of the Flesh and Blood Cold Foils, but better, to be honest with you. The Flesh and Blood Cold Foils aren't embossed and raised like that. And I'm sure the camera's not doing it justice because of my silly shadow, but ah, oh, these are beautiful. So there we go, two armaments. We are hitting the average. We should be getting one every three boxes. This is box six, the first layer of the case. So we can look forward to another four of those, ideally. And I think Weaves of the Shore is on point with their uh, collation here. Especially, like I said, considering the Ultra Rares. We haven't doubled up on any of those yet. So, And the best part about it, those are both playable cards for me. So those will go into my Lorraine deck. Really, really beautiful cards. And it's a super, it's listed as super rare too. I can't remember if those were the rarities from the original printing. I suppose I could take a look real quick. Let's see. I'm pretty sure they were just commons, but. And we can actually compare the difference too. Okay, Sword of Seeking was an uncommon uh, and ornamental greatsword. I'm pretty sure that came in like the demo deck. Do I play it? Oh, I didn't even play it. Okay, never mind. The Sword of Seeking. You guys can clearly see that they're embossed, but just for the sake of thorough YouTube content, let's take a look here. No embossing, boring, no foil, just a standard common card. New hotness beautiful raised embossed even the text is embossed on there like these this is probably the coolest rarity of card that i have ever seen printed in a tcg and again i'm not just saying that i'm not paid by weaves of the shore i'm not sponsored by them they don't provide me the early boxes i don't have the ambassador sponsorship or anything from them just from a purely objective standpoint of somebody that owns a game store and has played tons of card games that right there is the coolest rarity that i have ever seen printed in a card game I like the Pokemon Secret Rares, but I don't like them that much. I think the rainbow effect on some of them, like the older ones, really doesn't do it for me. And, you know, some of the newer ones have gotten a lot better. The alt arts, the secret alts, those are really good. But that really hits different. Those armament cards, and they're, like I said, they're probably going to be commanding, like Sword of Seeking, that's played in Lorraine one of the top decks so that is definitely going to command some value so there is uh, you know uh, it's worthwhile to open a case of this stuff guys because you're gonna get guarantees at some of these higher end cards and that's beautiful sort of seeking like I said our Grand Crusaders one would just absolutely rock me if we pulled one of those in armaments I'm not sure what I mean it's armament so it's probably weapons and stuff But who knows, it'd be cool to get one that had like an element to it. Ooh, thieving cut. Okay, there we go, it's another foil. It'd be really cool to get one that had like um, an element to it. I want to see what one would look like in the instance that it is not just a, a gray, like colorless kind of style one. Practical Insight, Windrider, Invoker, and hey, another Crawl. There we go. Our boy the dragon there. That's that three now I think we've gotten. So we've got a playset of him. Certainly have playsets of the other Tamer minions. 
Tamer Beast allies. To that slash. The broker. Where can you sell it? I feel like we're seeing some new cards here. Ooh, wait, okay, negate target activation control phase two. Cool. More interaction. And that I think was a big uh one of the big objectives of this set was to try to slow down the game. So that's one of the things that some games do suffer from. <coughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, the game is just over in a couple of turns and you don't really have a chance to do anything. And that's again why Sylvie is having trouble competing because she just doesn't have the ability to get to level three and keep up with the champions around her. So uh, slowing down the game, allowing more interaction, more disruption is definitely gonna be a healthy thing going forward with Fractured Crown. And I wanna see that, um, that trend continue because I like games that are a little bit slower and more methodical. Flesh and Blood is like that. Um, I feel like the strategy and the way that the gameplay progresses in Fab is a little bit linear. Um, some of the players at the store have expressed that they're, you know, just a little bit burnt out with the game, which I totally get. Some of them are very competitive, very, very good players that go absolutely ham on it. Um, and I can see why, you know, playing twice a week, we play at retro play games, we play at other stores, plus the big events have gone to the uh, Nationals. In Baltimore and other major events major major events like I can see how you would start to get a little bit burnt out need a rest the gameplay does feel a little bit linear at times and that's the cool thing about Grand Archive is with that um, the material deck you have the ability to strategically make choices about cards that you materialize to react to a given situation it's not just like feels like you're playing the same strategy over and over and over again it's like okay well this is the game state this is the board that i'm up against here what should i materialize next on my turn to help swing the momentum back towards me for the game you have those kind of opportunities and choices and you can tuck um, regalia back into the deck into the material deck you know and again your allies you're building up a team of allies to fight with you so it does it kind of and i, I liken to it in other videos as well it does kind of have that fab-esque here's your champion whoops peaceful reunion oh green slime for the foil love that that's beautiful look at that artwork shadow out of the way there the foils guys just absolutely top notch Um, it, it kind of has that fab-esque Grand Archive rather getting back on the subject has that kind of fab-esque uh, mechanic to it where you have a champion so in fab you have a hero different classes of heroes different classes of champions but instead of choosing all your equipment and laying it out on the field at the start of the game you start as just this little wimpy wisp and you have to level up your hero and ooh, Ventus Staff of Zephyrs. Now, that, if that came as an armament, what is it? Yeah, Regalia from Dawn of Ashes. Staple Regalia from Dawn of Ashes. So maybe a Grand Crusader's Ring is possible. Uh, but you're not just throwing all your equipment out on the field and, you know, going with your strategy. You start as a little tiny wisp and then you level your hero or your, sorry, your, um, your champion up as you go along. And again, you're making choices based on the way that your opponent's deck is playing and other strategic elements along those lines sorry i lost my box opener so it doesn't feel as linear it feels like there's uh, a lot more depth to the game and it's only going to get better i know there was some rollout there were some issues with rolling things out there were some issues with allocation people getting product uh, there is a wave two of dawn of ashes coming guys there are more starter decks coming so please 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 don't give up hope Again, stores like me and other stores that might be more local to you, depending on where you're watching this from, are going to have tons of singles available. So now is the time to get in when, you know, prices have calmed down after the initial release and everybody's starting to find their footing in the game and the meta is shaking itself out. This is the prime time to get in and start doing some deck building and brewing, experimenting, and get your hands on some of these beautiful cards. Uther, illustrious king. Good. Few of him kicking around into the bin here. I'm gonna need to go get another 2200 count box. How's all of the fractured crown stuff? I'm gonna try to be more organized about this. 
I say and then probably won't commit to, but I can at least talk about it to make myself look feel better. Innovate agility. That rare pile is really stacking up there. Okay, good. Didn't see the uh, level meter ticking on the microphone. It's like, oh my god, have I been recording these entire six boxes with no audio? Thankfully, no, I haven't. It did happen to me one other time, too. I was recording, I think it was actually with Dawn of Ashes, the case opening. And I set my phone to Do Not Disturb because I use it for the overhead camera. Frankly, Apple cameras, absolutely phenomenal. 60 frames per second. 1080p is exactly what we want for these videos. Not too high a bandwidth, but the quality is great. Uh, and somebody called me and it shut off the <laughs> recording of the video, which is why I said it to do not disturb to begin with. But you know, what are you gonna do? You can't win them all. This is box seven. So we have another chance at one of those let me go see a foil there. One of those awesome armament cards. Fast Cure. That's really nice. Fast Cure for the foil in this pack. We are getting quite a stack of foils. And technically, I guess it is possible to get more than the 18 Ultra Rares. Because I think I ended up getting triple in a couple of boxes when I did the Dawn of Ashes opening. Because you could get a double Ultra Rare pack with a foil in a non-foil version. The odds are against you, but it is definitely possible. Rider Invoker Wildheart Leer. Still no sign of that collector super yet. Is this going to be the box where we hit it? Or is it going to be one of the boxes on the very bottom of the case? Let's see what ends up happening here. I'm so excited to pull one of those. I saw, oh, Morgan Soul Guide. Okay. I saw one in person when it was pulled at the store. And they are phenomenal. Oh, also uh, at Anime North, and I'm sure if you're Anime Expo and the other uh, American anime conventions too, um, they have a display that has, oops, <laughs> they have a display that has all of the um, collector super rares uh, in it. So it was really cool to see that. Peaceful reunion, capricious links, measure. Guardian. Ooh, Merlin the Kingslayer. There's the mascot of the set right there. It's the first time we're seeing Merlin. So maybe she's a little short printed. Because what, we've gone, this is our sixth, our seventh box? So maybe Merlin is a little bit short printed and she's going to be the value. How many of those are we going to need? She's a champion, so it's a regalia, uh, in uh, your material deck. So you only need one, but I think it's going to be valuable based on we haven't seen any of them up until now. Fast Cure, Korhazi Arsonist, Korhazi Outlook. So maybe it's not as easy to complete. I mean, let me just double check. I don't think we've seen them really throughout our time opening yet. It's been, it's been a while, guys. Time isn't real. Nope. Uh, so no, uh, we don't have a Merlin yet. So maybe Merlin is short printed. And it would be kind of disappointing if things were getting short printed and it wasn't just regular coloration. But again, it's a new company, new TCG. A company that's printing the TCG out of Taiwan has never printed a TCG before. So there are going to be some growing pains. And based on the quality of the game and how much uh, Weebs of the Shore interacts with the community and seems to care about it, those are forgivable issues. Plus, buy Merlin on the secondary market. No big deal. Everybody knows that when you're deck building, you are opening or you are um, buying singles and not opening products. Red Slime and Slay the King. Getting to the point where we're going to need another empty box here on the side. Fractal, hey, a wild heart leer, liar, leer? Yeah, English is hard. Math is hard. Here we go. A nice big stack of foils there. I'm happy to see that. Especially those armaments. Can't say enough good things about them. You've seen the comparison. 
They are 100% better than the common version counterparts that I had in my uh, material deck before. So definitely look to get your hands on those. Those are going to be, those might be something that's worth grading. It's one in three boxes, or one in, yeah, one in every three boxes. If we pull a super nice one, we're going to have to send that off for grading, 100%. Grading service is available here at Retroplay Games. It's a lot. Goliath of Asa. Definitely seen him before. I think only one though. So possibly another short printed card in the super rare slot. How does that happen, you may ask? Well, there's only so many cards you can fit on a sheet and you have to math it out. The size of the sheet versus which cards are on it. And, ooh, okay, Rite of Realm. That's a double for us there. So the Ultra Rare, we got our first doubles. In the Ultra Rare category. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we need one more, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. We only need one more unique Ultra Rare. So we are sitting good in terms, excuse me, of completing our set of those, which is great. Oh yeah, a Blanche Sheltering Saint. Longest YouTube video I've ever done. This is going to take <laughs> bonkers amount of time to encode and upload. Fast here. Oop, I'm covering myself up with it there. Sorry guys. Bit of your Woodland Overseer. There we go. keeping track of the specifics of yeah we're gonna have to get another empty box here oh, wow, let's see oh. last pack magic guys literally a mountain of booster wrappers next to me this is the most of any product that i've ever opened in my life just to show you how much i believe in this and how passionate i am about it i generally open one box of pokemon one box of Yu-Gi-Oh! Grand Archive. Absolutely a mad lad for it. Okay, there's another armament. Jewel of Enlightenment. Beautiful, beautiful cards. I love, love, love these armaments. So that's our first one from row two of the case. It'd be cool if we'd see a double of these. Oh man, I love those. So be very careful with them. Not sleeve them up yet. I don't have my sleeves handy like a fool. Usually I put those out, but I'm really excited to open these and quite frankly, get through them and open dinner <laughs> to eat that. This is a marathon of pack opening. I hope you guys are excited to watch it, as excited as I have been to do the opening. It's really fun ripping packs that in the rush of endorphins and dopamine that you get is unrivaled. That's why we love TCGs and that's why we call them cardboard crack because they are 100% addicting. Okay, flame break course for the foil there. And covenant. So are we going to complete our set of ultra rares? So we'll just set set that guy aside there up there because we already have one it's a double so we're trying to get to see to the point where we can complete our set so this is box eight ten more boxes to go we're almost halfway there green slam zephyr's edge keep these as organized as possible. My girlfriend is going to be pissed when I open the door and she sees 
the massive pack wrappers that I've left on the floor. Don't worry, I'm going to clean them up, of course. Alright, Fractal of Intrusion for the rare. It's up a little bit, we're getting a little... Okay, here we go. Uh, Kingslayer. If you guys haven't heard that song, Bring Me the Horizon and Baby Metal. Kingslayer. Ah, banger tune. Also, Bring Me the Horizon did a cover with uh, Ed Sheeran of Bad Habits that was really good. I, don't, I mean, some pop music, I was, I'm was i addicted to Dua Lipa. Can't get enough of levitating. Um, I don't care for lots of pop music, but that cover song is an absolute banger. I'm listening to a Japanese metal band called Hanabi. Also really good. Um, Maximum the Hormone. Maximum the Hormone. Also really good with Japanese metal. They're like basically like Japanese system of a down. And I did say I was a weeb. And that's why Weebs of the Shore I think is such a hilarious name. So yes, I, I'm studying Japanese. Listening to Japanese music. And we're opening an anime-based card game here, so I feel like this is a safe space to talk about that kind of fandom. Raise your hand down in the chat. Hey, there's another Crowl Stone Scale Tyrant. Raise your hand down in the chat there. Or in the chat, in the comments section, if you are also a weeb. Of course you probably are. You're here playing an anime card game. Watching me open packs for literally forever. So you can take in and enjoy this amazing artwork. Wild Heart Lear. Lear? Lear? I don't know. Somebody correct me on it if I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm... my voice is picking up okay. I'm not clipping. Oh, there, I just did there. The clips when I open the packs. <laughs> it's okay, we'll fix that in post. This place for the rare. Here, Corhouse the Assassin. Oh, Quicksilver Grail for the Ultra Rare. There we go. Set complete. All the Ultra Rares right there. Oh no, that's a double. Sorry. Not paying attention. Okay, we've doubled up. So there, is there a short printed Ultra Rare? What is the Ultra Rare that we are missing? I think is the question here. I would have to go and look at the spoilers to determine what that is. Super takes the spot of an ultra in the box. Super rare, Blanche. Sheltering Saint. And once again, we are going to have to shore these up and put them into Super Rare's pile. We have just a mess of cards here. Getting through. We got eight more boxes. Or ten more boxes. Ooh, shock therapy. Well, we're gonna have to shore up these foils too. There's just there's so many of them. Them here. Armaments, guys. 
Definitely a cool innovation that I'm happy to see here. I think we're getting to a point where we can kind of speed open these and absorb. I've probably seen all of the commons and uncommons, so I don't think there's really a need to. Okay, super rare. We're just going to kind of speed through them at this point because, again, this is going to take forever to open all these if we don't do that. I do want it to be like a sweet surprise if we get one of those collector ultras, which I feel like, or collector super rather, which I feel like will be in the back of the pack. So. Which we are going to get one, at least one. Morgan Soul Guide. Super there. Oh, this is going to go much better. Peace Soul. Massage. The foil on this one. Got to keep an eye on those foils. I always do that with the um, fab boxes that I open. End up skipping right over the cold foil. Not so much in the regular studio, but here the <laughs> lighting is so bad that. It's like, oh, okay, a common. I should have got a cold foil, and then it turns out that there was one. Ooh, Incarnate Majesty. Okay. Merlin's going to be our build for this meta. Okay, going on to the next box, guys. Let's grab this one. Mix up the order of what we want. chance at another armament no foil but a covenant of thorns for the rare yeah, this is going to go a lot smoother we should build our rip 20, 20 packs per box 18 boxes spirit of serene wind another ultra rare duplicate Put that on the dupes pile back here Effigy of Gaia, super rare. Like I said, I don't mean to uh, you know hustle you guys through. I think we got we enjoyed some surprises and some nice artwork in the beginning, and now it's time to power through the rest of the packs. So we get through the box, and you guys don't have to sit through a horrendously long YouTube video of me slapping card by card on the table to find what we're all wanting to see at the end of the day here. It is really cool to pull those armaments too. So. Oh, we get, nope, stalwart shield mate. So just a standard foil there. Those in the one pile. Really nice pile of foils though. Can't wait to, like I said, organize and get everything into a binder. See just how big the collection has gotten. So again, I was going ham on it, and then my son came, so I haven't had much of a chance to uh, poke around at my collection too much. He wanted to, I got him into Yu Gi Oh! I introduced him to Yu Gi Oh! because we have a really good Uh, judge in our group that's able to teach the game really well so like I can do Grand Archive but he I got him onto Yu-Gi-Oh and I was like okay let's try this and he wanted to kind of stick with one card game because he already plays Pokemon so I'm not trying to overwhelm him like yeah let's learn Flesh and Blood let's learn Grand Archive let's learn Yu-Gi-Oh and then it gets to be a little bit too much so he opted not to try that I think maybe we'll try that with him next time he is back to Maybe I'll send him home. I don't know if uh, anybody in his area is... There's a lot of chattering on the rare, so I really hope that CSR that we pulled doesn't have any chattering on it. I want that to be mint for whoever ends up buying it, or if it ends up going to PSA. Oh, 
go. Integrate knowledge. And an explosive room. Put there. Lunch. Super. One more ultra to complete our set, guys. Down of ashes for the super. Fracture crown, down of ashes. Cook of still water. Reminds me of the movie Almost Famous. Still water, the band, kind of like Led Zeppelin ish. If you haven't seen that and you're a fan of rock and roll, definitely check it out. Actually, if you're a fan of rock and roll, I got something totally off topic from gaming, but this is probably one of the coolest things I've ever bought. One of my friends worked security at the Air Canada Center and Van Halen came through on their tour in um, 2004. And my buddy was working security for the show and Ed handed him that pick after the show. And I told him that I wanted to buy it off him at the time, and he wasn't interested in selling it. And then I saw uh, he had expressed some interest in selling it. Fast forward, you know, several, several years later, I haven't spoken to him in quite some time. Uh, and he uh, said that he was willing to sell it, so I bought. So that is an Edward Van Halen played. <gasps> oh, people. Okay, we gotta do this one slow. Here we go. This is the big boy pack. Oh boy, I'm so excited to see what it is. Oh, it's Merlin too. Yeah. <laughs> Literally the best possible pull we could get from this set. Merlin Kingslayer, collector secret rare. Ladies and gentlemen, only at Retroplay Games. There we go. That is what I'm talking about. That is an absolute banger of a card banger 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 oh wow okay that's got to go into a sleeve and then the covenant of thorns is the displaying rare at the back of the pack do i have i got something here like all i guess i'll sacrifice a what's in here there we go we got some dece sleeves we can get that merlin into and ideally a top loader, which I don't think I have any handy at the moment, but we do need to sleeve this. So one of these older Pokemon cards can take the hit. Oh yeah. This is just absolutely beautiful. Bonkers. No whitening on the edges, no scuffs or any issues on the back whatsoever. Oh, maybe. No. Nope. It's printed on there, hundred percent. Insane, 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 insane. We'll take this into a sleeve, real careful. There we go, folks. Okay, case is over. Video's over. Just kidding, we still have a chance to get, so what, what are we halfway through? Yeah, we still definitely 100% got a chance to get one more. Because there is at least one per case. But Merlin, absolutely the banger of the of the collector's super, rare, super rares that we could pull. That's the one that we want to see 100%. So we're just going to kind of trounce through these as fast as we can now. Whew, that's exciting. I, like I said, I didn't get that thrill from the very first uh, case when we pulled Dawn of Ashes, so I'm so excited to pull that and to pull the Merlin of all of the Collector's Secret Rares we could get. That is the one that we want to capture for YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. And I saw the edge of it when I was starting to sift through the pack. I knew we had to go slow for that one. we got to build up that anticipation. We got to keep an eye out for those um, armaments as well. So let's go. Let's get Merlin and let's get a Grand Crusader Spring armament out of this case. Life will be complete. 100% that will pay for the entirety of what I opened. 
And we'll call it a day on uh, Fracture Crown. <laughs> Although I am excited to see what we end up with in the um, organized play kits. Because I know in the Dawn of Ashes ones, there is also a chance to get collector super rares in those. Uh, we handed out not we haven't handed out all of them yet at the store. I still have uh, several of those on hand yet. So there is a chance that somebody could pull CSR out of one of those, which would just be amazing. So this isn't opening packs isn't the only way. Competitive play is rewarded with these ultra rare cards as well. So Merlin, Merlin, Merlin. I'm gonna have to shore these up again. It's getting to be there's there's a lot of cards going on here. Did I put a, oh, I must have put a pack down. Let's see, we got some commons here that we don't need to have those. There we go. There we go. Another foil. Eliminate secrets. And we are just about two thirds of the way through the box. Covenant of Thorns. Wow. Just wow. Merlin. I called it. I manifested it, guys. I said we were going to get the Merlin. And we get lucky on the channel, and we certainly do get lucky and get Merlin on the channel here. The super rares, I feel like we've probably gone through all of the super rares as well. There's what? Uh, 16 super rares? No way we haven't seen all those yet. So we'll keep the ultra rares out. We'll get Merlin into the spot that she deserves to be right up front and center in the video here. Just a banger pull. I'm so excited. If we can get a double... CSR case too, that would be phenomenal. What a better way to promote the game than to see what absolute fire you can get. Ooh, okay, there we go. Bedivere Woodland Overseer for our foil there, that's good. Make sure we don't skip over. Okay, oh, super rare. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna pile those on because same with the foils. Well, no, there's that's a really nice foil there, the bit of ear. Agility. Getting through these faster now. This is a much better system. Wild Heart Leer. Filling up these boxes with them singles. Definitely feels more like a supplemental set, but like I said, they've really done. Uh... Oh, Spirit of Serene Water. Is that the last one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did it! Complete set of ultra rares. Collector Super Rare pulled, three armaments, but we still got three more armaments to go based on averages, and a potential uh, getting another um, Collector Ultra Rare or Collector Super Rare hit. So stay tuned, guys. We're not done with this. Just because uh, I like the joke is okay, we've pulled the main jam of the set here. There's no need to continue on. But there is a need to continue on because. There are still good cards waiting for us to discover them. We're gonna get, watch well, us get a double Merlin. I don't know what the value on that would be, but 100% everything else would be paid for by selling those. I know Merlin is like the mascot of the set and I know she's gonna have some insane value. I won't lie, I did peep TCG player before we, uh, before I started the recording. But the collector super rares were not on there. So I think the highest value card was $25 in one of the one of the ultra rares. I wonder if it was, I'm not sure which one it was. Quicksilver Grail maybe? I think that's gonna be one of the definite staples. That's like the Grand Crusaders ring of this set. 
for sure. Banish non-champion card from material face down. Play the banish card. Super good. I can't remember uh, what it was, but one of the cards on TCG, the max value of it, I think was 25 bucks. And that's kind of where everything is settled, except for the super high-end collector stuff. Okay, there's Merlin again. So we've pulled three Merlin, only two of the uh, standard super, or uh, yeah, two of the standard super rare. So I think Merlin is definitely the short printed card. Maybe she was the one that was $25, but I feel like that's pretty high for a super rare, but how many are there? There's 16 super rares, so. Hey, okay, Resolute, uh, Resolute Stand for our foil. Zephyr's Edge for the rare. Getting through, getting through, getting through, guys. Completed our ultra rares. Definitely 100% have completed the set. Shock therapy. One more. Last pack magic. Watch us get a collector super. Rare. Two in a box. How crazy would that be? Just bad pack collation. Like you know, somebody's looking at this stuff, right? So otherwise, how do they guarantee one per case? So that that actually does beg the question. Like for mass production like this. This is our last, oh no, we still got, how are they collating these? I guess there's probably a sorting machine that can do all that stuff, and I'm sure with the success of Dawn of Ashes, they were able to invest some money into the printing process and get that, you know, help better kit out that company that was doing the, uh, the printing, because again, they haven't printed trading card games before, so. I'm not 100% what the process is or what it looks like. They have to be hand seated in order to guarantee that you're getting one per case. Curtis. Oh, that's super rare. My bad. So probably they're hand seeding the super rares, the collector super rares into the packs, and then the packs are being manually distributed one per case. I don't know. It just it seems like a for the process to ensure the guarantee. I'm happy that Weebs did that though. Like it's definitely going to make people more enticed to buy entire cases of the product for sure. Other than, okay, well I'll try a gamble because I can't remember what, how many boxes it was. I think it's like one in like 30 boxes uh, for one of those serial collector ultra rares and I just couldn't, couldn't get on that train. Because it's expensive. Love the game, but I just don't have that kind of money to throw at it. And to, to buy the singles, like it's also out of my completely out of my budget. So them putting a guarantee that you're gonna get one per case was a very, very good strategy, I think, on Weed's part to help people, the average person, get a hold of more cards like that. Because again, you want to compete in the path of silver. How are you gonna do that if you don't have the ability to pull? The high-end cards. So we got a fire tongue there for the rare, or for the foil rather. Should probably be a little bit more interactive with showing them to you guys. Even cut. Making sure that we're on the lookout for those armaments. Pulling the foils aside. Pulling the ultra rares aside. So we do have almost a half of another set of ultras which i think we should get at least doubles of the complete set Avatar of gaia for the rare okay lurking assailant i don't know if that's a double of a foil for us be interesting to see what ultra we pull one two three four five Seven. Yep, all seven ultra rares. Bangers, guys. Bangers, bangers, bangers. And we gotta continue. We gotta open the whole case. We can't just leave it. Because that would be kind of a dick move. And I know some stores out there will do that. It's like, oh, okay, well, we pulled this card, so there's no way that the rest of the case could possibly have any value. But if you're not putting it on YouTube or doing it live or whatever, how is somebody going to know? Like, how is somebody going to know that over half of this case has already been drained and we pulled the CSR from it? They don't, right? So 
Okay, it dematerialized for a foil there. And that's a really cool idea. Return target regalia to its owner's deck. Again, tucking stuff away. Um, it's a slow spell, so you can't respond to like um, regalia destruction with it. But, oh, I'm going to materialize this. Oh, well, tuck that back. You spend a bunch of resources on it. Slowing down the game. Giving the underdog hero... Oh, Crow. We're seeing a ton of that guy. Is there any other ones that we haven't pulled yet? I don't know. I'll go through and tabulate everything up, obviously, because it's for the store. So, see what all we ended up with here. He was the main one. He, I really wanted to see him, actually, for the CSR2, but definitely in terms of value recuperation on my part, Merlin is going to be the the big girl to have had there. I'm so so excited about that. Beautiful artwork. All of the CSRs are signed too, so not serialized. Like the collector ultra rares from first edition Dawn of Ashes were serialized, which was really cool. These ones are not done like that, but still insanely hard to get, right? Like how many boxes did they open for that? There was six, seven, eight, we had to open eight boxes. So there is still a good chance that we might get lucky with another CSR. And that would just, like I said, complete my experience for me. Dudes of the Shore looking after me, looking after the channel, making sure there's interesting stuff for you guys to see and also good value for all of us to share at the end of the day. Innovate Fury there. Gonna have to stack up into another box, empty box, when we finish this. Booster box here. Soul of Serene Water. There's another double ultra rare there. Or Spirit of Serene Water, rather. And last pack magic, guys. Let's see that armament. Definitely there's going to be one either in this pack or the next box. Right, because that's, uh, that's nine. Ten, eleven, no. Twelve boxes. Oh, okay. Well, that's three, six, nine. Yeah, so the next box is going to have an element in it. Should, according to the averages, I guess we might see one. See them kind of doubled up here and there as we progress through these. So we, this is finishing the second layer of booster boxes in this case, and we've got six more boxes to go after this one. Thanks for hanging in with me, guys. I'm trying to make the chatter. Keep everything as interesting as I can for you. Again, this is <laughs> this is the longest uh, booster box opening I have ever embarked on in my life. So I appreciate everybody sticking it out with me. But as you can see, we're getting some good stuff here. Like these armament cards, I wish they would have put those into Dawn of Ashes, honestly. But you know, they got to keep you keep you involved to get the um, get the next product. Okay, shock therapy. I really like the quality of the booster boxes too. It's got those separators in there so your packs aren't clacking together. Makes it good for holding all the singles too after you've opened them all. Test here and eliminate secrets. Rare. Probably actually fit more into these if I was stacking them up by the end, but oh. over anything cloak of still water sorry for the glare guys again the lighting's not ideal in here i will be back into the regular studio shortly majestic spirits for the ultra rare so we are getting on our way to completing another set of regalia ally i like that card i wonder how you cheated out though for 12 memory like bam oh, okay Develop mana for the foil. We're getting a big stack of foils there. Slay the King is a rare. <laughs> Broken Soul Knife. That's a super. Oh. 
No foil ultras yet, though. And any of these other ones, Gawain or any of these um, allies, I think, are also available as. Collectors. Anything that's possible here. Even that foil too of the, the one that we pulled was pretty awesome. Tower of Gaia. I don't remember which one it was, but I'm doing nice with the Trisket. These collect the foils. Like, there's no way I can justify holding on to the Merlin now. Too. The ones that people are selling from Dawn of Ashes, like foils are not cheap. Even the basic stuff. The art's so good, right? So, oh, capricious link. Oh, okay. Protective fractal. Common foil there. And a Beetle Visage. Maybe I don't, I don't know if we've seen that or not. To be honest with you. It's hard to keep track. It's only a 90 card set. 123 foil variations. So what does that mean? 123 foil variations. So that includes the special um, CSRs. So that means there's potentially 33 beyond the standard 90 cards. So it's a 1 in 33 chance of getting Merlin out of however many boxes are going to open to get that. Again, I think the value is going to be there on that card. Not that I'm purely speculating on the value of the game, guys. Like I said, there's substance here. The quality oozes from every aspect of this TCG. It's just purely from the standpoint of I ought to be able to afford to play it and fund <laughs> these uh, box opening adventures for you. Of intrusion, I'm chattering on that one. Getting down to it. <clears throat> Got to be an armament in this box. It's every three boxes. So three, six, nine, and this is six boxes of that row. So there should be one in here. And then once again, if uh, Weebs did their job, yeah, every three boxes, every 15 boxes, so. gonna get lucky, guys. Right. Hopefully, we don't get shorted on any of the stuff. This is the last pack for this box, so there's gotta be one in this pack. Unless I was a fool and totally skipped over it, but they're very striking cards, so. Ordinary boy. Ooh, he's got that card's a little beat. No, there is no. Okay, so there is no. Um, no armament in that box. So maybe we're going to see some double ups in the bottom row of boxes here. That's six more boxes to go. So there should be. two armaments in this bottom row. There's three armaments in this bottom row. If the averages are, like I said, like is it average? It's every three boxes, but I mean, some people, excuse me, opened up cases and cases and cases and didn't get collector ultra rares. So I guess it is on average. The, the only guarantee is that you're going to get one CSR per box. Oh, there we go. Assassin's Ripper we pulled an armament. Look at this, guys. Like, these cards are just absolutely stunning. I can't... Legend Story Studios, take note here. These are what your cold foils should be like. Like, these are just insanely beautiful cards. 
you know, you want me to come out to an armory every week and spend the money. And we were, we were having a conversation about this in the, the fab community. You have the opportunity to pull some insanely valuable cards out of the Grand Archive um, prize packs, right? There's Collector Supers in there, Sylvie's and Rise and um, the Unique Allies and Triscuit and all the, the other ones. In Yu-Gi-Oh, again, our our group has pulled, I've pulled like over $300 worth of prize cards alone. Now, I, I should say that I don't run the, the events at my store. So it is my store, but I have somebody else that is actually running the events as a TO so that I can play in them. And there's no guilt or, you know, shame or anything here. Also, I'm not a good Yu-Gi-Oh player. So it's not like I'm sweeping, mopping the floor with everybody and taking all the prize packs. I got lucky on an entry pack and I won uh, one pack for third place the other day. <laughs> and that's, that's about the extent of it. But anyway, back to the main jam that I'm getting at here. Legend of Story Studios, the prize support that they give. Don't get me wrong, love the company, love the game, but the prize support is four cold foils per month and two playmats. And then there's rainbow foil promos that get handed out. So I, I don't make the players compete for those. We have a large slash small enough player base where everybody can get what they want out of the um, out of the rainbow foil packs that come. But those cold foils, now those are the main reason that you're playing every week. So you're paying, you know, ten dollars or whatever it is for the cost of the armory that your store is charging, and you come in, and then you don't win. And you don't win, and you don't win, and you don't win. And what we've been finding is we have some competitive guys in our group. And some of the newer players that are coming out are having a hard time competing. Now, that's not to say that people should be letting people win. It is a competitive event that people are playing, paying money for. And there's nothing wrong with people coming out with the intent of winning the cold foil. So it's definitely not a uh, jab at my community either. Great guys, and I don't blame them. When you're paying money to play cards and to win something, go for it. I just, it's discouraging that that's the only prize support available. And with the Yu-Gi-Oh community, like my son has been coming out and playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I said, I got him into Yu-Gi-Oh. He didn't have to win anything to get to pull one of those triple tactics thrusts like he pulled an ultimate rare tactics thrust so 140 dollars canadian ish haven't looked at it within the last little bit here card is insanely valuable he didn't have to do anything to win he just got a pack for entry and then pulled that out of it so i think that the idea of giving out prize packs for prizing is something that legend story studios could do better to oh okay look at that guys a foil merlin so we've got the collector super and we got just a regular foil merlin i know that's going to have some value to it as well let's just sit that there she is 100 percent the mascot to the set that's awesome foil merlin can we get another csr is there some more gold to be had we have oh yeah okay we are in the last little uh, run of the box here gawain chivalrous thief maybe that was the one i don't know i don't remember the values that i saw in the tcg player to be honest with you that stuff is going to become more readily apparent tomorrow because set actually releases and again i'm not putting this out until midnight i'm not breaking any rules or trying to get in trouble with legend story or sorry with uh, weebs of the shore but anyway legend story since that was the train of thought that i left off on could really take uh, a lesson from handing out prize packs and that's the, the, the best part about that strategy is that people don't have to win cunning broker for the foil there guys to feel like they're getting something valuable out of their experience and now the, you know you come and you trade and you play cards and you make friends and the venue has to keep the lights on like it's not free for me to run events and have fab and bring in the product and everything every week but I can see from a new player's perspective why they might be more drawn to other games such as Grand Archive because they give out the organized play kit. So when I ordered the very first run of Dawn of Ashes, I received boxes of packs. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Another Merlin. Now we're, now we're starting to see all the Merlins. They were just hiding at the bottom. Uh, we're starting to see... Or, sorry, we were handed... Uh, for every 10 units of product, 
we were handed a box of packs and that was the um surprising for the organized play events and some great stuff has come out of it like there's foil ultra rares in there foil super rares of good cards valuable stuff like you're you know you're paying five five bucks to play in the grand archive locals and you have a chance to come away with something really awesome not to mention the store championship stuff like oh boy that orb of uh, glitter and the playmat were just phenomenal phenomenal prizing and that's not to say that probably can't even hear me when I'm bending down over here. That's not to say that uh, Legend Story didn't do well for their bigger events, like to draw people in for ProQuest and draw people in for the Road to Nationals, which we've run at RetroPlay Games. There was definitely some legit prizing. But, again, for the average play to get money out of it and keep people from being burnt out, mixing up the formats, that's on me, you know, but... The prize support is really what's going to draw people in to a game, and I think that it could be improved upon. And again, Weebs of the Shore just ticking all the right boxes here with how they do that. The organized play stuff is awesome. The game is awesome. The cards are awesome. The art is awesome. Look at these lottery cards. That is awesome. Like, I'm super jacked to just sit here and open the product, talk to you guys. Fab was, has been very underwhelming for the past couple of sets. Like, Dust Till Dawn, I did not care for whatsoever. I am not an uh, illusionist or um, shadow brute player by any means. Did not care about the set. Now, the next one, going to metrics, I'm a dash player, so I'm very excited about that. But I'll say probably the last three Fab sets, like Tales of Aria, I really enjoyed. But the last three sets just didn't really do anything for me to be honest with you i didn't really care much for the lore and care for the cards i don't want to continue to build new heroes every single time a new set comes out i like to play with the heroes i have and see them get support which you know eventually they're gonna swing out a favor and something else is gonna be good and i'll have to adapt but the last couple of sets just didn't really do anything for me uh, in terms of fab, so I am excited to see what happens with Bright Lights. I've been shaking it up with the format. We did uh, Sealed um, Blitz Constructed, which was a lot of fun. Forces people to play new heroes they've never played before. Uh, it was a very balanced format. All of the decks felt really balanced against each other and the games were close, so that kind of breathed some new life into the game for me, but I can agree that I've kind of been getting burnt out on it myself. Spending more time playing Yu-Gi-Oh than oh, Dawn of Ashes than anything else lately. Zephyr's Edge. I'm kind of wondering if I skipped over one of the, maybe the foil that is actually a, maybe it was actually a armament and I just skipped over it. No, it doesn't look like it. Beautiful foils, though, guys. Again, can't get enough of this game. The fact that I am willing to open an entire case of product, oh, Fire Tone, we got a double of that, I think is indicative as a store owner that I am 100% backing this. And again, I went to, you know, I went all the way to Toronto to, <laughs> to meet the creators, and I just, I feel like this is really something special. And one of the Fab players said that about Fab, too. And that's kind of why I alluded to that at the start of the video. You know, there's people that were like, oh, well, like Magic players taking a look at Fab. Like, oh, well, this is a really weird game. It's just weird. And every time a new game comes out and people want to like it, they get stigmatized. And the same thing happened, ironically, from some of the Fab guys onto Grand Archive. Because I've been pushing the hell out of it. And there's been a couple of other people that have really gotten into it and really enjoyed it. So I just say, if you haven't tried it yet, Please keep an open mind with the game. It is very, very good. Give it a whirl. Give it the old college try, I like to say. Slay the king. King Slayer. Check out that song, too. Baby Metal just put out a new song, too, with Tom Morello. Natati. 
Really, really good stuff. And then of course everybody jumps in the comments section to bag on how crappy of a guitar player Tom Morello is. I disagree. I think the guy has some skill. I think he's got some chops. Just because he's not Ingve Malmsteen, which frankly isn't really my cup of tea to begin with, doesn't mean he's not a good guitar player. And certainly he was an innovator in the genre. You know, using the whammy pedal and the harmonizer and stuff that was built into that, plus his kill switch and his innovate, like the dude innovated rock and roll 100%. So whether or not you are a Tom Morello fan is irrelevant. Check out that, uh, that song by Dave Reynolds. Not sponsored by any of these bands. I'm just also a local musician. Granted, these people are well-known artists making tons of yen, tons of money. But check them out. One artist. I like to promote stuff that I like and get more people on board with it. There we go. Foil Fracture Eyes. Sorry, shaking the camera there. Fractal of Intrusion. We have got four boxes after this. So getting down to these last couple of packs. There should be an armament in here. Because we should be seeing them every three boxes. Majestic Spirit. I think that's a triplicate of that. So we've got our set, and there's going to be a couple of other ultras available for you guys or whoever happens upon the website. I'm going to really have to, like I said, spend some time getting all these singles sorted. Thankfully, the collection that I bought from uh, Draco, that dude is phenomenal at organizing cards. Frankly, I should pay him to come and <laughs> do some organization at my shop. Okay, box 15. Oh, look at this. We got some weird. They're stuck together. <laughs> box 15. Jesus. I wish I could show you. Oh, I guess I can. You guys can see. Look at that. <laughs> look at this huge pile of packs. Pack garbage. Just craziness. This is garbage man is going to be like, what the hell, man? Guy went crazy. Opening these Weebo packs with this girl on the front of them. But you know what? You like what you like, right? It's a good, good card game. Good art. Thankfully, my girlfriend's supportive of that. Frankly, she watches more anime than I do, so that's a keeper right there. Hey, what do you want to watch tonight? I don't know, Demon Slayer? Perfect, fire it up. Doesn't get any better than that. I did get her to actually play Grand Archive with me too, but she was not a fan. Just doesn't really care for card games. She's more the traditional card game type. She likes to uh, play it like Euchre when we go camping with her, friend, uh, with her family and friends. But that's it. TCGs aren't for everyone. I'm just glad she was willing to give it a try. And like I said, she likes to watch anime with me. And she supports my... There's another Merlin. So I guess they're not short printed. They were just all in the bottom boxes of the case. No foil ultra rares though. That's insane. Like I wonder what the odds are. Will we get one out of an entire case of 18 boxes? Like I said, she's uh, she's supportive of my willing or my wanting to learn Japanese too. Ooh, Frostbinder Apostle, that's some beautiful artwork right there. So I speak Japanese randomly as I try to practice to myself, and she doesn't understand a god dang thing I'm saying, but she knows I'm passionate about it. My son loves it though. My younger son. My older son's more interested in learning Spanish, which is fine. He gives his. Uh, you know, live, growing up and living in America, so it makes sense because that's a more widely utilized language there. Uh, but my younger son loves Japanese. He's learning along with me. And sometimes he surprises me because I'll teach him a word or teach him something and then he'll come to me like a week later and be like, hey, and then say it back perfectly, I might add. Like, ah, oh, dang, son. You are listening. But you don't listen when I tell you to clean up after yourself. 
How can you learn Japanese words but not follow simple instructions? Just kidding. He's a great kid. Love him to death. Dematerialize as a foil. That's going to be valuable. Those are definitely. Dematerialize 100% going to be a staple. Regalia are powerful. They can win and lose games for you. So. And we get we got another one of the heroes. And one of the side people is uh well yeah. Those are good pulls. Those are good pulls. I don't think we've gotten any of the other ones. Let's, uh, oh yep, Bedivere. We got some really great but Merlin's a champion, so those foils are 100 percent Like I said, she's the the mascot of this set, so the Merlins are going to be the bread and butter of what we've got here but these are also awesome we'll keep a keep an eye on those foil champions foil unique allies we're gonna end up getting another I feel bad too I told my girlfriend I was gonna bring her a nice cold drink when I came home and then there was a bunch of construction and detours and stuff so I didn't stop and I was like oh okay I'll just film this YouTube video real quick <laughs> it's like it's been a while I feel bad so I'm gonna get her an extra special treat when I go out after I'm done here but I don't want to stop right because we're doing a live box break and if I stop and then I pull something awesome I'm like oh you seated that in Granted, like, who's going to give me a CSR Merlin to seed into my box somehow that you guys have been, you've been watching me the whole time. The case is right there. So, But people are like that. For the sake of continuity, I want to make sure that nothing is off about what's happening here. Everything's all live. But when I'm done, because I was, I was like, okay, I'll stop and make a, a Tim's run and smoke break. Can't do it. Got to power through it. Do it for the van. Ooh, okay. Spirit of Serene Fire. So how many, how, have we completed another set? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got another complete set of ultra rares. So there we go. This is the only triplicate is the Serene, Spirit of Serene wind, right? So two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, the Majestic Spirit is a triplicate as well. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need the Fractured Crown. One more Fractured Crown. To complete two sets of Ultra Rares. And then we'll just, we'll go ahead and sell those out as a complete set. Somebody will pick them up. Call it a day on that. I'm not sure if Cami is going to be going ham on this set like he did with Dawn of Ashes. That dude supported Grand Archive, man. Let me tell you, he went right in on it. And I greatly appreciate it. He's a really good dude. Really fun to play games with. Cammy, if you see this, not sure if you're uh, subscribed to the channel. Just want to thank you for supporting that first run of Dawn of Ashes and supporting the store in general and being such a great guy. Same with you, Dea. Dea works real hard to organize our events, keep everything running smoothly, all of our communities owe him a big debt of gratitude. And anyone that's ever stepped in to help out at the store, anyone that's ever supported the store, all you guys that are on this channel, once again, thank you so much. It's super fun because there's a community of people that are getting enjoyment out of it. So that's what keeps me going here. So no armament out of that box, and we are going to have to switch to another empty booster box. So we have filled one, two, four, six, seven boxes completely full of singles. <coughs> this is going to be box number eight, and we are coming up on the last three booster boxes of Fractured Crown, guys. We are almost there. So one in every 15 boxes is a CSR. So we are in, we are past the 15 box mark, which means that we could start seeing another CSR pulled from these packs. We've also haven't seen any foil ultra rares. We've gotten a little bit short on our 
armament cards, so we'll have to keep an eye out for those here. We are one short of a full or another complete set of ultras. And this has just been an absolute blast. Like I said, I've never opened this much product before, and we've gotten some really, really cool stuff with foils and everything, which again, I don't need to hang on to in order to maintain competitiveness or anything. I'd rather put them into the hands of the collectors. Let's get you guys off winning that path of silver. Let Retro Play Games help you with that. The prizes are sick for Ascent, by the way. You get uh, like collector ultra rare versions of the um the spirits spirit of water spirit of wind spirit of fire those are uh, available in um, special edition for the prizing for ascent so if you have the ability to make it don't sleep on that you get to meet the collectors play some top level competitive ga probably some of the guys uh the bigger guys personalities from okay there we go drawn blade there's another one of our armaments. Look at that, guys. And we're, they're all unique, too. We haven't gotten any doubles of the armaments. Like, ah. The Drawn Blade is um, definitely one that I will be able to play in my Lorraine deck. We've got two playables. I would just, frankly, would love to see the Grand Crusader's Ring make its appearance in um, that special armament. I, I know that there's gonna be people, tons of people ripping boxes because I think a lot of stuff or a lot of stores. Uh, oh, there we go. Did it. Set number two of the ultra rares from Fractured Crown. So it took 16 boxes for us to get two sets. So about one in every eight sets. We did end up getting one double. Uh, and then in the second uh, second row of packs there, we ended up pulling a decent amount of doubles, actually, of the uh, Ultra Rares. So we have triplicates of Majestic Spirit and Spirit of Wind. But that's cool, though. Two complete sets of Ultras. Incarnate Majesty. So again, it is worth it for me, right? Like, from a single sale perspective. It's a TCG, so you're never going to... You're never going to come out ahead opening packs. The next case is guaranteed to have a CSR in it, but, you know, you're never really... It's always a gamble as to whether or not you are going to plus on any given box. The G of Gaia. Definitely the super rares. We've seen them all. Definitely the commons. Yeah, there's 28 commons, 18 ultra, uh, uncommons. 21 rares, 16 super rares, 7 ultra rares, 7 collectors seek super rares, 26 super rares. Um, fractured crown armory. Super rares. So yeah, that makes sense. So there's 7. So you'd have to open 7 cases of this to even have a chance at getting... A complete, um, complete set run of all of the collector's supers. And I'm not even sure. I'm now I'm curious as which which ones all got that treatment. Certainly Merlin, Gawain, probably Blanche. So that's yeah. I mean that's uh, there's quite a quite a low chance of. Okay, Incarnate Majesty, Foil Super Rare. That's going to be a valuable card because it is a Super Rare Foil. And it's playable with Crocs, which uh, Merlin is Crocs in the set. Real interesting to see what she ends up doing on the competitive circuit. I haven't watched any of the... Um, like deck building brewing videos uh, with any of this stuff yet so I'm not sure where people are heading competitively this is just my own personal speculation so 
coil, steel, steady bursts. Last pack, guys. Two more boxes to go. And then it's going to be smoke break and coffee for me. I have earned it. Okay, we're going to get another armament. Windwalker boots. So we are owed, technically, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Yeah. We got shortchanged on one armament. As you will see, not you should see. So maybe we're gonna have to hit up Weeds of the Shore and be like, bros, where's our where's our other armament? They will watch this too. I'm sure. When I met Siladar, he mentioned that he had uh, seen my Grand Archive Dawn of Ashes box opening. So I'm happy to. That was an honor, actually. A <laughs> creator of a, a game that I am very much a fan of watched a video of a channel with less than 70 subs so it was cool that they um, that he had seen that and some of the other Grand Archive crew had seen that and actually it was cool I was on Twitch watching um, a guy open and he was having some technical difficulties so I was like oh you know once you try this once you try this and then the guy saw my name in the chat was like are you D retro play games I was like, I mean, I'm the only one I know of. I, I, I'm not sure, you know, like, have you, do you, have you heard of me? He's like, yeah, dude, you were the original, the OG that was opening uh, Dawn of Ashes on YouTube. And then the, the streamer was like, oh, we got a celebrity in here. <laughs> and I was like, like I said, my channel has 70 subscribers. So for me to get any kind of recognition at all, ooh, Ordinary Bear for the foil there, just kind of felt really cool. And I gave him a shout out too in the, um, he was actually kind of what inspired me to rip the case. Cause he got, uh, he was on there ripping some packs on Twitch. So I was like, all right. And then again, I should have, <laughs> should have opened the one that I sold to Draco. But what are you going to do? Hindsight's 2020. We got, we got our chance at a CSR here and we finally got to live some of that magic. So, and we should be getting one more armament which i really like i'm excited to see what they're going to throw in the next set what's the next new kind of chase mechanic going to be there of ashes they'll do like a uh, unique ally companions or something they'll give them all charts or spice them up somehow or who knows looking forward to seeing how they end up progressing the game though because like i said i love it so much i love the artwork i love opening the packs love playing the game i'm looking forward to being a little less busy as the summer progresses when we get into fall so i can uh, have a little bit more time to play some games. Kind of get back into the routine of children being at school. And I'm, you know, my work life is super hectic right now. So I'm very excited to be. Oh, my lord. Okay. Yep. There we go. There we go. There's our arm. Did it. Did it. So maybe that last box, and it's a melodious flute to a tamer instrument, so that'll be useful to play with Sylvie. Oh, I'm reaching for the next box already, it's like, yep, done. Um, yeah, my work life is just incredibly hectic right now because I have uh, school coming up where I'm at too. So the shop's not my full-time job, and I'm sure I've alluded to this on the channel before alluded to just straight up talked about it on the channel before that the store is my side jam um, and I have a full-time career outside of uh, running retro play games and doing YouTube and all that stuff so I'm looking forward to things slowing down for me in that regard as the school year progresses and I am less busy 
Back to school season, let me tell you. As a parent and in my field of work. Oh, there's an ultra rare there, so that's a triplicate of that. So we are two and almost two and a half. So probably there'll be a unique one, another one in there. So we'll get like two and a half sets of uh, ultras. All right, Majesty, super rare. Fury. I wonder if the organized play packs will have a chance to get these. Ooh, guarded dissipation. That's a. Oh, yeah. Like I said, guys, these foils, I can't get enough of that. Uh, Innervate Fury. I wonder if the uh, organized play packs are going to have the same kind of chances that uh, CSRs and these elements as. Uh, the Dawn of Ashes one's dead. Okay, there we go. Another box down, another box, oops, from the singles. Up off the floor now. Okay, last box magic, folks. There's gonna be an armament and a CSR in here. Let's do it. Last, last little bit. And then we are done with Fractured Crown. And on to cleaning up all the garbage. Quick Silver Grail. So there we go. Yep. Um, two and a half sets of unique ultra rares. So that's going to be helpful. We can sell. Make, we can probably com like build a complete set of this to sell out. Somebody that just wants to do that instead of opening all their own packs. I'll tell you, there's no shame in that. I tried to do that actually with uh, Dawn of Ashes first edition. Somebody just sell me a complete set. I don't care about the foils, I just want to have a complete first edition set. As we've seen with things like Welcome to Wraith, Alpha, and you know, other successful TCGs, which I really want this to continue to do well, and I hope that Weeds of the Shore continues to improve, you know, working out the kinks with the distribution. I'm not sure what it looked like in terms of... Um, how much of this stuff was sold at the distrib- I know my personal distributor, the one that we have here in Canada, there's only one that carries it that got an exclusive contract, um, have sold out of this quite some time ago. So I'm not sure what the overall worldwide supply is, but they're all, they're trying to reprint Dawn of Ashes Altar. Plus they want to keep on with the demand for this, although this is a smaller set. So, oops, scavenging raccoon, we got him in a foil. Nice. Um, this is a smaller set, so probably the demand for it may not be as high, but then again, guaranteed collector super rare per case. Like, just because it's a smaller set doesn't mean there's not good crap you can get out of it, so they're going to want to keep, like, people are going to, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say what the supply is going to look like out there. But I wanted to get my hands on a complete first edition set of Dawn of Ashes, and that did not happen because it was actually insanely expensive, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, I did end up getting most of a complete set of it. My deck, my Lorraine deck, is um, well, it was before I switched it over for the uh, Star Championship. Nice, a red slime and a foil. Uh, it was mostly um, first edition stuff. Actually, yeah, it still mostly is first edition, I think, except for a handful of really expensive cards like the Grand Crusaders ring and stuff. I don't have that in first edition. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to have that set. It's a, it's a good spec, a good hold, you know? Like, uh, these cards are going to be 
certainly worth some money someday if the game continues at the trajectory it's at. Which I think it will. Like I said, I think Wakana is going to be good for collectors uh, until Disney really ramps up the printing production because they have the ability to do so. So, you know. How long is that Mickey alt art foil going to maintain a thousand dollar price tag? Probably not super long. There's going to be a ton of it. Granted, the ceiling, I think, is higher for special um, Disney stuff. It has a much, much wider reach in terms of an audience than something like Grand Archive does. Um, not Pokemon, though. Pokemon is the largest grossing media franchise of all time, and Nintendo actually has the more recognizable characters, believe it or not. More people recognize Mario than recognize Mickey. But... Um, but I think the ceiling is a lot higher for Arcana products, at least in the short term, than it is for things like Grand Archive, Flesh and Blood, like, people that don't play TCGs and just strictly want to collect the stuff are still going to spend money to get their hands on Disney IP. There's people that, you know, are adult Disney super fans that go to Disney World every single year. I know people like that personally, myself. Not really for me. I think that I would rather alternate locations for my vacation. But you know what? Vacation is different things for different people. Treat your own. Whatever makes you happy. Life is short. Live it up. Hopefully it's not a valuable card in the back of this one. Windwalker Boots because it does have a ding on it. But that's what happens. Guys, two packs left. Last two packs magic. Let's see what we get here. Are we going to get another armament? Probably not. I think we pulled the Melodious Flute out of this one, didn't we? I don't know. I'm not even keeping track. We get a foil, so there's a Korhazi Trapper there. Are we going to get, in this last pack, Magic, another Collector Super? We're going to flip slow through this one. Just in case. Oops. You never know what you're going to find in there. Here we go. Ready? Scavenging Raccoon. Prismatic Sanctuary. The last card of the last pack of the last box of Grand Archive Dawn of Ashes. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We got through it. We got through an entire case. 18 boxes, 360 packs. Thank you so much for watching everybody and putting up with the uh, makeshift studio. I know that the lighting's not ideal and everything, but we did get there. Hopefully you had a good time. GATCG.com, guys, for the latest and greatest on what's happening in the Grand Archive community. Shop.RetroPlayGames.com if you want to pick up some singles, order some boxes while I have them in stock. It's selling out fast, so please get your hands on some while you have a chance. I do have an entire sealed case. If you would like to get your own Collector Super Rare, and get a chance at this sweet, sweet Merlin that we pulled today. It could be yours. Shop.RetroPlayGames.com Once again, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Share the channel out for more awesome content coming to you from Retro Play Games. And until next time, 